Yeah, I'm talking to Alex Hutton and uh, uh, went into his talk, uh, was going to be on burnout in the uh, uh, security industry and uh, it, it totally took a, a, a different direction. It was really interesting that, Alex, give us a little uh, summation of, of what your talk was about. So a little while ago I saw a movie called Jiro Dreams of Sushi and it really struck with me about how Jiro is this 85 year old sushi chef. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen the movie, who has a 10 bar stool restaurant in a Japanese subway. Uh, but what's remarkable is it's a three Michelin star uh, restaurant and it's some of the best sushi ever created uh, because he's embodied the concept of being a craftsman uh, with his work. For example, he knows that he's going to massage the octopus for octopus sushi for 30 minutes, not 40, not 20, but 30 minutes. Um, he creates a feedback loop with a customer about what he's provided for them. So here you have this 10 stool restaurant in a Japanese subway. Prices start, three Michelin stars, prices start at 300 bucks a month. There's an eight month wait to get in. It's, um, it's just this weird phenomena. And I started thinking about, okay, so as a security practitioner, as somebody who's responsible for risk management, where, how am I a craftsman? Where do I have the opportunity to figure out how to massage octopus for my octopus for 30 minutes and not 20 and not 40? And as I started investigating it, I really went through this, um, I really went through this revelation that burnout itself can possibly, and I'm not saying all the time, I'm not saying this is a panacea or anything like that, but a possible cause of that might be a Western style expectation of recognition and self-worth and all these values versus investing in what you do, the product that you create, this concept of craftsmanship. And I realized those times when I've been most motivated at work, those times when I've really felt like I've produced the best work possible, where people have said to me, this is the best risk work I've ever seen. Um, those were times when I was on fire for the craft that I was creating, for the output that I delivered and I really sweated every detail, much like a craftsman would. So this talk was mainly about, here's burnout, maybe if we remix our, our, our perspective on who we are and what we do, um, maybe that's something that will not only help us kind of avoid burnout, but even help the business make better decisions about how to invest in security and, and how to manage their risk, if that makes sense. That makes total sense. And then and, and what struck me in your talk was uh, that even looking at a question of, uh, of, of excellence and craftsmanship, and that really uh, brings up a notion that, that security, which is a, a young field, uh, as is a lot of the technology that we work to secure, um, that's, that's really a sign that we've reached a certain level of maturity, isn't it? I would say so. So I, I have a friend, uh, hey Kelly, uh, I have a friend and he explained when we were talking about this craftsmanship and the, and the work products that we produce, he explained, you know, really for the last 15, 20 years, our entire industry has tried to sell, consume and be experts at deploying one U boxes. I tell a story about going to a risk management program uh, that I knew was fledgling for a large organization. I said, we're held here to talk to you about your risk management program, you know, and how we might be able to help you. And they said, oh, I've got one. It's that one, one new red thing over there in the data center, right? He's pointing at Skybox or whatever. And, and I'm thinking, that's not at all a risk management program. It embodied a whole lot more. And so moving that, that these symptoms of moving away from a one U solution that's going to solve our security problem to I'm a craftsman, somebody who uses data, science, perhaps everybody who's, who's heard me talk knows I'm, uh, I like that sort of stuff. But moving towards that as a craftsman. And that's why I think the whole arts, for, you know, in the Tripwire blog where we talked about art versus um, science. science, it was like these are not mutually exclusive, they're not polar opposites. Um, there's a craftsmanship, an artistry that we can bring that doesn't mean we have to divorce science. So, so uh, you know, where where are the nuances then that we can start 
uh, looking for uh, uh, in ourselves and our vendors in how we serve our sure. clients from from every perspective, uh, the, 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 the customer and the, the service provider. So there's a great scene in, in the Jiro Dreams of Sushi movie where uh, the preeminent food critic for Tokyo newspaper is eating some sushi and Jura is right there staring at the guy intently looking for it. every little reaction on his face every little piece of feedback um, to go right to the heart of your question the place where we go is to the people we serve the CEOs of the companies the CIOs that we serve the cut if we're consultants the customers that we deal with on a daily basis and we say basically how did this work help you make a better decision was the quality of the decision improved because I we made this investment in my work for you right I, I think that's the real baseline because when you get right down to it we're not about securing the network we're about trying to make, figure out how secure the network can be with the resources that we're given we are decision support and so if we ask ourselves and we ask those people we serve are we making better decisions that's where we're going to get that feedback loop just like Jiro looking at the food critic for any semblance that the fish is off or it's too much wasabi or whatever. Sure. So, uh, well, are we as an industry ready for that level of humility when, when we've just basically got to the point where we can uh, tell the, 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 the companies uh, that we're serving that uh, we don't have all the answers? The best, the best CISOs, right? the best CISOs I know are there. Right. Um, I think it's a lot better than it was 10 years ago. I think it's a lot better than it was five years ago. I'm not sure that the vendor community understands and embraces this. I think there's some cultural changes around that product managers will need to embrace and so forth. Um, you know, to understand that the output really isn't meeting some set of requirements in the RFP. The output's really better decisioning. Yeah, you're probably going to have to meet those requirements in the RFP, but you're also, at the end of the day, going to have to second guess the customer around this executive level decision making and how whatever it is we're producing as a vendor helps facilitate that. Alex, thanks a lot for taking a few minutes to, uh, thanks for having to me. discuss this and I'm looking forward to uh, a little more of this uh, development of this philosophy of, uh, of the craftsmanship uh, within security. We'll see. There's a, a riskshikonin.com blog that I've put up with one entry in so far. We'll hopefully get some more soon. I recommend everybody check it out. Thanks a lot, Alex. Thanks.